Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting number 128 here in June 6th. Having a good time, running our way through the half of the 2017. We're getting a little late to start due to some technical difficulties keeping this thing recorded, uh, but we're recording them for all of you that aren't able to be here in this time slot. Plus for posterity in case we have to come back and remember what was exactly we talked about? Um, what are we talking about today? We're talking about uh, 314 a little bit. Uh, and this slide didn't get saved when I <laughs> rebooted. Anyway, so we're going to talk about 314. We're not going to talk about 3.4 plan um, because we talked about that last week. Uh, we are going to talk about issues. Rob has done some analysis and wants to talk about how to tag issues or things we could do with that. And then we'll do a triage um, and things like that. So hopefully the next slide actually says what it should say um, when I go forward. Oh, almost. All right. So I lost some data when I restarted because apparently it didn't save. Um, uh, Wix 3.14 plan. The Wix 3 develop branch is now moved to 3.14. So that means we can start taking pull requests there and doing builds, and they will all be numbered and updated and put to the appropriate places. In other words, we won't continue making 3.11 builds. We will make 3.14 builds. Yay. Uh, did that over the weekend. I am in the process of... Um, standardizing the tools on .NET Framework 4.5, um, so uh, which is, as we described, moving forward off of 4.0 to 4.5, a.k.a. we will target the Framework 4.5. I did analysis and looked, and targeting anything above that didn't really give us anything, because we don't use things like WinForms or WPF or anything like that. Um, so 4.5 seemed like a reasonable place to target. Um, also updating the bundle at the same time, such that if you do not have 4.5 on the machine, we will install 4.6.2. The idea being that if you don't have uh, a 4.5 on the machine, we'll just upgrade you to the latest in the chain of, of uh, .NET Framework so that you're in a better place at the end of all that. Um, so that's the other thing. And then the last thing that's not on here is the reminder that we're taking fixes in 3.14 that help people migrate to 4.0. And we're going to go do a, during triage and pull request review, we're probably going to be pushing a number of pull requests off of three, uh, off of the 3X branch and into the 4 branch saying, yeah, we're not taking these kind of features here. And then we will probably have many, many debates of what's a bug fix that we actually will take a 3.14 and things like that. And I don't know. Eventually we'll find the place that we want to be on those discussions. So that's the 314 plan. Given the fact that my slide deck went back in time, I'm pretty sure the next slide is about 4.0. So I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to let Bob take over. And he's going to talk about the analysis he did of other issue trackers and how we might be able to update how we're doing our tagging and such to be more efficient. Bob, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, can you pull up uh, the list of labels in which tool set issues? I think I can here. Yes. Okay, labels. Yay. Good? Mm, no, that's only showing the ones that are active. Can you click the labels button? I think that'll bring you to the, the ah, full list. There we go. There we go. Um, no, where are you? I think you're in a Wix 3 repo. I am in the Wix 3. Oh, God, I expect. I am in the Wix 3 repo. There we go. There we go. There's my that's list. much more. There we go. Um, okay, so so yes, I was wanting to complain about uh, some issues with our labels, so naturally I got stuck with going to do the research in orgs like uh, the .NET Core repos, um, Roslyn, I stuck with Microsoft because I know they have people that actually spend time thinking about labels, so I figured we might as well, you know, pick up the free work that they did for us. Um, one of the things that they do is use prefixes to kind of namespace their labels. So you might have a, um, like an area prefix or a resolution prefix. That was kind of interesting because we have, we have a lot of labels. So breaking them up in some kind of hierarchy isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, I think there are other ways we can reduce the number and make that more manageable, um, but I didn't have any strong strong feelings. Um, 
one overriding thing here is that we need, I think, to document what our labels mean. So I think if we do that, things will be clear. And I don't know that we get a whole lot of benefit out of uh, making the names longer by adding prefixes. But like I said, no strong feelings about that. Um, we have duplicates. Um, for example, we have a label for dark and a label for decompiler. They mean the same thing. Um, sometimes they're, uh, well, compiler and candle are probably better examples. Um, and you'll see on the right side on the screen the list of uh, the count of open issues. Problem is it doesn't give us the count of closed issues, which is the problem we have with duplicates. Um, I'd like to propose that we delete duplicates, you know, you know, I don't know, pick candle over compiler or compiler over candle. That's, you know, whatever. Um, and delete the other one. The problem is that we have closed issues that I believe would lose their labels if we delete them. Um, I don't know if there's any kind of bulk reassignment we can do. Maybe we could do it through the API uh, if we want to write a tool. Definitely could do it through the API. Okay. But that would require um, a tool. Yeah, yeah, so we'd have to write that. Just to delete the duplicates, which kind of sucks, but um, I think we should delete the duplicates because there's, you know, uh, it's just confusing to have more than one thing that means the same thing as the other. And it would reduce our, our list. Um, and, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. We have duplicates of everything. It looks like, like Pre, yeah, burn, pretty much. Bootstrapper. Yeah, yeah. Light's a little trickier because we have binder and linker, I expect. Hey, look, my next topic. Um, we have a lot of uh, somewhat precise labels. Um, and some of the precision that I saw, like in Roslyn, makes a lot of sense. They break down, they break stuff way down. Um, to the point where only, you know, like an expert in the technology can uh, properly assign a label. Um, you know, so for example, we have uh, burn acquisition as a label. Um, we have binder and light and linker. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of torn. Um, you know, for the most part, I think having burn as a label would be sufficient for us to, you know, I don't know that we get a lot of value about uh, from breaking stuff down. Uh, again, Roslyn was my example. Uh, and, you know, for them, I'm sure it makes sense. You know, you have a big enough team, you use your, your, your area labels to, you know, have the right people look at the right things or, you know, I'm sure there's internal graphs and whatnot. Um, I don't know that we get a lot of value out of that. Um, binder versus linking, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. We, I, there's, we don't lose anything by having them except that we expand our list of labels. Um, so I think that's worth some discussion. Um, all that was about you know, primarily, you know, our existing labels and how we might make them better. Um, there's one other thing that is pretty common in projects, and that is um, to use labels as a way of, of signaling something about the issue in terms of, of you know, someone who wanted to work on it. So you have, like, complexity labels. Um, up for grabs, if you've heard of up for grabs .net, um, you can label something as up for grabs, and it's a signal that, hey, this is easy or easy-ish. You know, it's an, maybe it's a nice way to get involved into a project. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> a weekend project. Um, I'm suggesting easy peasy lemon squeezy. I don't know if that's going to be popular, but <laughs> um, ways of labeling things to say, hey, if you're interested in contributing, take a look at these issues. Again, this is a you know also a doc uh, problem. We need to make sure that it's clear. 
Um, on the other end, you have um, this is a hard thing. You know, don't take this as your first issue. Um, in our case, WIP required is probably something we should be labeling with mm -hmm. in addition to putting in comments. Mm -hmm. That's good. WIP required is a good one. And if yeah. for grabs is the standard, I mean, then we probably should just use that. Well, it, it is kind of a standard. There's also uppergrabs.net, which actually goes looking for GitHub issues with that label. Right. So, uh, which is not a bad thing. I just didn't want to, you know, we should we should consider it to make sure that we're, you know, we're actually, I don't know, fulfilling whatever they're expecting from that label. Uh, agreed. So, but I, I like the idea of having a tag that says. Here's a bug you could start with, and I really like the idea of WIP required, which is not the opposite, just it means there's more thinking required on that, right? Yep. Although you're unlikely to have a really easy thing that requires a WIP, so um, it's possible, but um, yeah, okay. So I, I like up for grabs, and I like WIP required a lot. I don't know that we need to flag everything in between. It basically means, you know, it's not a starter spark. Yeah. Does it right. need the whole document written? Yep. I like that. I also like what we did here with harvester and heat. I wonder if we did that with all of our, you know, compiler and candle, um, then whichever way we want to do it, then with this parentheses, that actually is a nice way of tying it to the names um, as well. Well, it avoids the need to, to you know, write a tool to go relabel everything. Well, no, we still need to do it because we need to consolidate the two of them. I was saying, well, that's, we rename the oh, I see. Parentheses You're saying handle and still okay. consolidate them. I see, but consolidate under compiler candle, compiler parent candle. Exactly, and you okay. can pick which one you want to do. Is <laughs> right. Binder. Um, it doesn't matter much. Uh, binder only has two issues in it, and I bet oh, it open. Many. Well, too open. I doubt it has many clothes in it, so it's probably overkill. Yeah. To differentiate it from the link or light kind of thing. Um, Burn acquisition, I think, came in with a, a number of of bugs early in you know, Burn's development. Yeah, and, and that can just go away, I think. That could just merge in the Burn. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I like it. I like it. More? Is there other things? No, that was it for my list. Um, you know, big thing is just to you know, come up with. Uh, it, it's still interesting to me to talk about the number of labels we have and whether you know prefixes would help. Um, I think if we consolidate, we'll get down to like you know, I don't know, maybe 40 labels, and that's not too bad. Um, they still all need to be documented. You know, suspend is, for example. Well, that one's always needed to be documented. Yeah, that's that's one that's specific to us. But then we have um, like things like Tallow, which is you know from Wix 2.0, which right, is right. purely for you know closed bugs historic. Yep. So, do we need a way of tagging or tagging tags <laughs> that says obsolete? Do not use, or is that just on us? Actually, yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I, I think it. Okay, maybe I have a new bullet. Um, it might be interesting to uh, you know to where we find things that are, you know, Wix2 and, or, you know, for example, Wix2. Okay. Those we can safely, you know, label obsolete mm -hmm. and not worry about them. Mm -hmm. Tallow. I say we can label it obsolete and remove the, you know, remove the tallow tag. Oh, you want to mark the bug obsolete and then remove yeah. the tallow tag. Okay. Uh, that might be the only instance of the label we have that, you know, actually goes completely away. We may be able to, yeah, but this is a consolidation of Wix setup and Wix UI, if that is what I think it is. No, Wix UI is oh, no, the dialog UI. library. Of course, the dialog yeah. library. Yep. But we have, I think, an installer tag. Yeah, we have an installer tag. Okay. That, okay. That's Wix setup. Yep. Or should be. Yeah, it's pretty clear we switched to something else. I'm not sure we made a conscious decision or. Right, right. Or we well, I'm thinking a lot of this might have. And then we, we might have, have come in during Visual Studio. Mm. 
Yeah, when they dumped bugs on us. Yeah. Cool. I like the ideas. So how do we execute on this? Well, I'm willing to write the doc, which is just going to be, you know, a two-column table. Okay. Um, consolidation, like, that's going to require at least one or two tools. Um, um, I, I, on the consolidation front, I think we should we should update however we're going to do it. Like, if we're going to do it harvester, parentheses, heat, or heat, parentheses, harvester, whichever way we want to do that, um, and pick a tag for all the duplicates. So, like, I would pick compiler over candle because there's 60 versus 5. Right. So change this to compiler parentheses candle or candle parentheses compiler, whichever way we want to do it. Um, and then mark this tag, add a, you know, in parentheses, you know, obsolete or do not use, right? Yeah. Just so we know. So we stop using them, right? Or migrated to compiler. Yeah. You know, burn yeah. acquisition. Migrated to burn. And I'm fine if they're long because we should never use them anymore. Uh, also fair, yeah. And if you want, we could put an X in front of them or something to push them, or a Z to push them to the bottom of the list if that makes any difference, since they're clearly alphabetized. But whatever. So I think that allows us to clean up the issues as they are now, and then it's just a matter of getting rid of those Z issues and migrating them where they need yeah. to go. So, you know, Z dash burn acquisition, migrate to burn as a whole tag, and we'll never use it again because nobody would accidentally pick that as a tag they'd want to put something on it. And any issue that was currently tagged with it, closed, would be pretty clear of which way it should go then. Does that sound reasonable? That works for me. Sean? Yes, no? Maybe? Other people? I know Sean's hiding because he's on his phone. So, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. All right. All right. I like it. Peanut Gallery have anything to say? The Bench have anything to say? All right. It's been a while since we had both John and Jacob here. It's been busy. Summer's off. All right. I think that sounds great. Did you get enough notes there, information, Bob, to decide the right way to go or to remember everything? Yeah, I think right. so. Cool. So, moving along. So, the goal here is that we'll end up with fewer issues, which honestly is mostly an issue, but on bunch, um, on for us when we're going through and tagging all of our issues during triage, since other people don't generally or can't tag things. All right. So, let's try this again. Speaking of no labels, 15, there's 14 this morning. All right. Moving on, we're going to do triage and PR review. Dun, 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 dun. And we may not do PR review. We may postpone PR review for today since we're running a little late, but we'll see. Plus, we have quite a few issues to go work our way through. And I've lost my mouse cursor, of course. Uh, all right. This is a feature request to add failure message text on XE packages. So... I see. So if an error fails, add a message. What would, I guess we'd send an error. Uh, Burn would send an error message. Well, currently we, you know, we have the exit code, but and that's what we show on the um, on the failure page. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, I didn't comment on this. I mean, obviously, we have a oh, problem. Oh, I see. They want this to show on the final page. Yeah, they want this to be the you know um, uh, actionable error message. Yeah, but it doesn't work that way. No. No. But you could have a thing where if right. a package has a message, save it, and the BA could display it. The problem is this is basically. I think this is a uh, this is a Wix standard BA thing. Yeah, right. This is a Wix standard. If you have a custom thing. BA, you can you can track the exit code from your pack from individual packages and customize your own UI. Well, um, I'd be fine if this sent an error code. Like, if you had a message, the exit code could send an error callback because there's an error callback. Or does that yeah, only yeah, have, yeah. 
And that has a string in it, right? Um, oh, I don't remember. It's been so long since I looked at that one. Yeah, I think it does. So if it does, then we could just use that. And then Wix standard BA could say, oh, I'll store the last error message right. message and carry on. Yeah, yep. So that's totally a valid thing. So I think this should be marked WIP required, and we toss it 4x, and someone could go implement it. Yep, I agree. All right, moving on. I wish I had that WIP required label. <laughs> yes. Um, you can give this to me and put it in 40 because I am fixing this as we speak. Oh, excellent. Um, and this is actually being removed from 314 as well. Let pre processor extensions implement iDisposable or add a method to indicate all files have been processed. Okay. Toss it in 4x. Mark it as a whip required and call it good. You can create a label just by declaring you want it, right, Bob? No. No. Oh, no. All right. Well, that's what we should do. That could require a whip because I can see that being usable. I don't think we should do iDisposable, but that's fine. Reboot. Isn't there a finalize already? There is, but I, don't, I think it's per document, not per oh. preprocess. Interesting. Okay. And having, having looked at preprocess things, I'm like, yeah, you know, it actually would be kind of nice to know when this is all done. I don't think there's one for compiler extensions either. It's like, we're all done. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's reasonable. Yeah, it's reasonable. And yeah, okay. Cool. Someone could write the whip and all that and think about the other cases and we'll be good. Um... Reboot after installing done. If framework burn tries to load the original from source from the wrong source. I can't. I'm not gonna be able to scroll these things. I'm not getting any hit. Uh, I can't hit. The, uh, I got it. <laughs> uh, jeepers. Um. I don't. Manage restrapper fails. Burn tries to locate in the original source. The bundle is named. Oh, this is the. They built the bundle with one name and then they renamed it to another name. And uh. Burn looks for that as the original source because it doesn't have anything else. Yes, this is a known issue. Yes, this is the behavior. So uh, don't rename. So the answer is don't rename your bundle after you build it um, to avoid that particular problem. Um, and we could toss this to Forex and someone could try to solve it better than we're doing right now. Because, yeah, this is kind of annoying. There may be an issue on this already somewhere. Um, yeah, probably. Because the, the fact that Burn tracks the, the name is problematic. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah, someone could look into this. Could be better. Um, can't hit. Where's my mouse cursor? There it is. Um, NuGet package freeze off Visual Studio 27 OX page. Oh, cool. So... That extension point in Visual Studio is unhappy. Cool. Votive. Someone could fix it. Path too long. On executing Votive 2010 v6. Yeah. This is a Visual Studio issue. Cool. Um, well, no. I mean... Not entirely. Not entirely. Oh, is it because our name's too long? It's our name's too long, and on XP, whoa, blast, um, and in German, the path is extra long. Holy cow, it uses our name? Yeah. Why does it use our name? Why doesn't it use the ID? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh my, why'd they use the name?
Well, so yeah, Net Foundation and Contributors, but Wix Toolset Visual Studio 2010 extension is also a bit of a mouthful. Why don't they use a description, too? <laughs> At this point. <laughs> um, uh, how many characters over is it? Yeah, didn't count. We could shorten it to VS2010, I guess. Can we do that without affecting the display name? No. Just the name. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what... And, and I guess we could take off and contributors. That's kind of lame, but... And it could just be .NET Foundation, I guess. Uh, well, we could do 2010 VS extension instead of. Oh, so I, I was saying, Wix, I was saying Wix toolset VS 2010 extension. Okay, I was trying to avoid compressing Visual Studio 2010, but yeah, whatever. Either way, I don't know. And contributors might be enough. And German is is known for being an excellent example of of we should tell the person to shorten his expands. name. Um, well, he already did that. He just said user here, which oh, might you're right. Sorry, throw off. Which also means that we have to look at you know what happens with uh, like an an Active Directory username, which is the full name of the user. This is horrible. Marketing branding should never be in a path. No. To this extent. To the display name. We need all those words because all, like, we can't take any of those words out. Right. <laughs> And Jacob's like, yeah, can we take out extension? I'm like, no, because... Then it would be... Wix Toolset Visual Studio 2010, what's that? <laughs> like, oh, is that everything you need? No, it's only the extension. Um... Uh, I don't even know. Our identifier is really long, too. Yeah. All right. Ideas, thoughts? What do people... Yeah, it's... it's... <laughs> So I'm not exactly sure what's going on, because um, you know it mentions this workaround where you, you know, unzip the v6 into the right path. As far as I can tell, he's not changing the path. I think he's just taking advantage. Basically, it looks like v6 installer, you know, doesn't do the the long path dance. But if you have an unzip that does, you can successfully unzip the V6 into the right path. And Visual Studio apparently also does the long path dance, so it tolerates the the greater than max path path, which is actually pretty interesting that one half of the shell supports it, but the installer doesn't. I don't know what to do with this. Well, the problem, as, as far as I can see, up to the the path, we're at two hundred characters. Just for the 
the you know, documents and settings path and the .NET Foundation contributors up to the version number or up through the version number. So we only have 60 left in our yeah. stuff. Which is a problem when, you know, like an item template. Yeah, templates get pretty deep. Uh, that is a four-character username, which doesn't help matters. But if we dropped and contributors, even if we just dropped and contributors, it would probably be okay for this particular case. So we drop and contributors and we compress it to VS 2010. Yeah. Yeah, that would that would get us, I think, over the hump for this. What do you what for this do you case? Think? And, and remember XP, and this is only XP, right? The paths on on Vista and later are much shorter. Mm -hmm. That's XP. Got to wonder how much of everything else works on XP. Yeah, really. Um, all right. So, what do you? What does everybody else think? Does that sound like the right thing to do? So, is this just 2010? No, it's just 2010 is the last version that runs on XP. It's just, it's the combination of you know an extra long path because of the XP you know directory names. And the V6 model of where things get put. The author and the display name as the path. Yeah. It's crazy. I guess that that's what we have to do. Yeah, I don't. We don't lose a lot by getting rid of Visual Studio 2010. I mean, everybody's gonna know what VS 2010 is. Yeah. Um, do we? I don't like it personally, but whatever. Do I take the space out of VS 2010? Is it, do you squish it all together or is it VS space yeah. 2010? Squish. Okay, so we squish VS 2010 and we take out and contributors and we hope that that makes enough room. Yep. All right, you can give this bug to me. Okay. And I will go update the votive thing and do all that. I'm a little worried about the identifier now, given this. Yes, I don't like that. Or rather, I, I'm i concerned that <laughs> they, uh, they aren't using it because we could squish the identifier, no problem. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if we should. You know, without I'm, without I'm, visual I don't know change. what happens if we change it, though. Yeah, I don't know. No, I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want to deal with all the repercussions of that. No, no, I agree. Run that bridge if we have to. All right. So if you could put those notes in there so I don't forget, Bob, that would be great. Um, okay. So what we're going to shorten the names to. Um, a vast blocks digitally. Oh, this was closed. Right, yeah, so. Yes, if you sign your bundle... Yes, so we have a new version of Burn coming out, and we always have this when we start. The the crappier antivirus companies take a while to figure out that Burn is out. A new version of Burn is out, and they have to deal with the new certificates. Well, and every time there's a signature update, you're you know, running the risk of uh, of uh, very squeamish antivirus companies. Yeah. So anyway, send it to the whatever, and the false positives, and he'll carry on. Curl. Yeah, we have a copy of Curl that we're not even using that could be deleted. So I don't know where Blair went after opening this issue. Is this... Um, you can give this to me. I'll just uh, delete it. Okay. I wasn't looking. I didn't see any... Uh, we uh, were using it. I didn't see any use of it. Oh, this was like JavaScript over. script days. No, I think it's <laughs> I think it's SourceForge days, but I don't know. Wow. Yeah, okay. I, it's, just, it's just we're carrying it. We never noticed, so it's like, yeah, we can just get rid of that. Uh, 
Yeah, I think it was used to download something. But I thought it was the the feed. Maybe. Oh, maybe it was the feed. Yeah. So anyway, we don't need it. Um, error level one after successful installation. Is this us, or is it theirs? Yeah, it's a little confusing. I, I I went looking briefly. I didn't see anything. Um, yeah. Theoretically, you know, we're always returning the right thing. The only change, um, of course, is clean room. But I should return the code that you asked it to. Otherwise, that would be a big bug. Yeah. That would mean that you know restart. Hit, um, Notifications are coming out and stuff like that. Um, three ten three, huh? All right. Um, toss it in four. Someone can look at it if they want. Four X. Unless somebody wants it. Maybe yes. No. Uh, sorry, I'm having issues with SourceForge at the moment, not being able to set source labels. GitHub, okay. same thing. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, all right, cool. Well, all right, someone could look into this. Interesting change that could be. VS 2017, Devin searches not VS 2017 if there are build tools installed. Uh, Heath has taken this. I don't know. This doesn't have a pull request to it, so cool. I, I thought he did. Did it? Oh, maybe it didn't. It just didn't reference this correctly. That's probably what maybe. happened. All right. So, um, ah, I think I this see. is the one he said. Yeah. All right. Cool. Fine. Cool. So we should go update that to reference this and we need to talk about whether we would take this in three. Something you want to talk about right now? I don't know. <laughs> um, no. Well, yeah, we have to put it in the right milestone. Um, at the moment, milestones aren't working, so... Well, I guess we don't have to then. Um, <laughs> we should still decide, because I'm going to have to go back and fix it at some point. Yeah, what do we want to do? Are we going to take a bug like the, uh, an issue like this in 3? I'm not getting no thoughts, no opinions. All right, Jacob's going to get something. I really don't want to be spending time in three. <laughs> but he no, can do the that's... work to build, to do both, so that's he's done that part already. Yeah. Um, this is the Visual Studio extension that will get this change. Um, it's, it's more of a, I want to get out of doing work in three. I just don't want us doing work in three. Regressing things, fixing bugs, just dealing with it in general. It's not yeah. well, an it, effort it, of four. Yeah, and and you know, no matter what, there's a cost to you know to maintaining maintaining the code. And the more changes we make, the bigger the churn, the you know, the bigger yeah, the, the chance that we're going to have to do. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> that said, he's done the work. The other thing is that this just came in in 11, the yeah. end of 11, so it's yeah. probably pretty brutal to not let Heath fix any of the things that he just wasn't able to get to. I mean, yeah. and and it came in late because there wasn't really any other option for it to not come in late. Yep. All right, I'm giving special dispensation to this one because it's VS 2017 and all that. And Heath has done the work. He's done the right thing. He did 314. He did three. He did three and four. So, all right, we'll take this to kind of mop up on the 2017 moving forward. Okay. But old bugs aren't going to get the same sort of thing. Oh, yeah, this bug's been around for a long time. Cool, you could continue to live with it in three. 
All right. Um, so we'll take that in three whenever you get the milestones, and we'll take it forward. Custom action fails to build after upgrading to stable 3.11. Is this the one you guys are having a conversation on? Yes. Somewhat. Yeah, and something, 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 something. Now, this isn't happening to everybody. We would, this would be a much bigger problem <laughs> if it was generally uh, all over. Yeah, I, I agree with that. So I don't know what's different. So I think we toss this in. I don't know where we put it. <clears throat> um, I don't want to toss stuff like this. Okay, you want to keep looking at it? Someone mm. needs to look at it then. Uh, okay. Because I don't want it to just sit here. I mean, otherwise it just sits here, here, open, or whatever. Well, untriaged. Yes, I understand that. We can leave it untriaged. If, if you're like, ah, let's come back to it in two weeks, I'm okay with that because someone's going to follow up with it. Yes, but I've already looked at it a fair bit, and it's just not something I'm familiar with terribly. Yeah. Right. And it's, it looks like the, the path is too long. The command line is too long, right? There's an 8K limit, and this thing hits it. So, but he says it used to work. I'm like, well, mm, I don't know what to do there. Well, then we're going to be like, it's only failing for him, so I think the issue... Any update on this issue? The issue is, no, you need to go figure out what's going wrong because you're the only one hitting it. Okay. I'm fine with that. I'm not going to fix the bug for him. I'm not going to try to reproduce it, personally. So someone else here could. Sean could sign up to do it. I don't hear him volunteering to do that. So I'm like... Sorry, my, my my reaction was a general. I'm you know after all the discussion about issues, I'm like you know or issue labels rather. Um, you know there there's there's also a cost to just you know opening a bug and okay. You don't want to leave it. No open. one's in. All right. I well, I, I'm not saying that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You know we we need to do whatever we're going to do with it. Um, and I'm fine saying you know uh, you know hey this isn't something that most people are running into, so what's different about your scenario? Right. Yeah, or or also, you know, so far you're the only person reporting this problem, so therefore you should go talk to Wix users. I'm also okay with that. Yeah, he's not going to get an answer on Wix user stuff, so there's no point saying I'm there. Well, I, I don't know that I agree with that. I mean, you know, a problem is I, you know, I don't use managed custom actions, so I'm not familiar with the intricacies thereof. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and maybe someone on Wix users would have more interest in in the problem than you know the people who are looking at bugs. I don't know if that's true. I'm just yeah. So do we need a label that basically says um, works for uh, it's only you kind of thing? <laughs> I don't know what it is. Works on my machine. Almost, but it's like, well, it's, you know, not a widespread issue, which means it's probably localized to your configuration. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah you upgraded to a new version. Maybe something changed that you were doing wrong before that 3.11 didn't hurt you. And, or sorry, that 3.10 didn't have a problem. Now it's getting exposed in 3.11, so you need to change. Like maybe their Wix environment variable is supposed to have a backflash on it, but doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. So, so it's certainly worth looking at, uh, you know, from the perspective of changes you might have to make because of MS Build 15. Yeah, because yeah, the 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 whole MS Build extension path, right? Yep. Um. So I. We need a way of saying, um, at this point, you're the only person reporting this, right? I don't know what to do, right? Because we would have a lot more people yeah. screaming about this if it didn't work. Uh, I agree, yes. 
it's been long enough and we have enough downloads of 3.11 that I'm pretty confident there's been one or two managed custom actions being used. Yep. <clears throat> so it's like, look, here's this bug. Um, at this point in time, it seems you're the only one encountering this. So we're closing it with this label. You are welcome to continue to investigate your private you know, things. If you want help, maybe people and Wix users will help you, things like that to discuss you know, what to do. And if you find the underlying issue, please open a new one because we're not going to come back to it if it's closed. I'm trying to get the best of all worlds. We tag it, we close it, and they get the information that they need to go investigate their own issue or find somebody to help them. Yeah, yeah, that's reasonable. Okay. okay. I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm generally done with, you know, dealing with random crazy stuff that, like, too much other stuff to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, well, and, and, well, so, so that's why I went with Wix users. It's like, you know, this is, all right, this isn't a, this isn't a general bug. Yeah, so we um, need to come up with a template that we add to GitHub that does all yeah. this, you know, one of those drop-down choosing right. things that says, this yeah. is one of those. Um, I'm thinking, like, the name localized. This is a Stack Overflow thing. Yeah, where localized it, is great, except it also doesn't get confused with localization. Oh, yeah. I don't That's want someone right. opening it going, what do you mean? I don't have any problems with localization. Right. <laughs> you know, personal. <laughs> Personalized. Um, individualized. Something like that. Private. Personal. I don't know. Something in that direction. Not widespread. I'll see what I can come up with. All right. Wix tool set 3.11 must be installed to this project. What is the frick? Where are people still getting the RC build? They've never updated. I guess. I'm about to figure out how to put a check in there that says, you're running a pre-release build. Stop. Yeah. Well, the problem isn't so much that it's RC. It's that the the extension requires, you know, changes introduced in 17.01. Yes. So it's the extension that now is incompatible with RC, but it looks, yeah, it doesn't look like that. Yes. Well, yeah, like I said, maybe I need to, if I get one more of these, I'm probably going to go put the <laughs> stupid check in there that says, you are not running RTM. Stop. Yes. I'm fine with that. Unable to install Wix extension. Yeah, I think this is the typical. Yeah, VS6 is controlled by them. There's nothing we can do. Can't be our fault. I guess we could put unless we put in the wrong stuff. But it's just fine. Can't be our fault. That is a new resolution. Yeah. Feature requests: support remote payload for payload elements. Remote payload. Oh, they they want to just to find the files once and they're going to put the hashes and everything in there. It's like all the other remote payloads. All right. that things reason. So, yeah, this is another one of those good things. Whip required, put it in 4X, see if they want to do the work. Well, there's three pull requests. There's a what? Pull request. It In three or four? Three, I bet. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We're going to tell them to go put it in four and probably create a whip. So, yeah, no. Um, accessibility name for EULA RTF theme license is wrong. What? Okay. Um, it's not wrong. It's missing. And then Windows is filling in. It's missing. Part of how theme, well, yeah. You know, theme util works by creating all the controls and then hiding the ones on the pages that aren't visible or aren't supposed to be visible. Um, the, the problem is accessibility you use hidden labels to name things. Well, we have a bunch of labels depending on the page you're doing. Um, thinking the, the, the best fix here is for us to add a permanently hidden label for the below. That will matter which your or, or, 
Yeah, Bob, I'd you're be, breaking uh, up a lot. I don't know if it's happening to other people, but uh, damn it! Yeah, I'm being I'm this from Link. Bob's turning into the robot. So, all right. So, the, I guess the question is: Do we take this in three or four? Oh, did we lose Bob completely? I think we lost Bob completely. No, I'm still here. Oh, all right, that's better. Hold okay, back. good. <laughs> um, I am reason. Yeah. All right. I have a door. It's not better. It's just a little. <laughs> we can hear you some. Some words are coming. Okay. So, uh, three or four. 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 Great. Take it in four. Awesome. Let's see if we can get through these last, then we're going to call it a day. Unable to build Wix 3.6 project with references in Visual Studio 2017. Wait, Wix 3.6 project? A Wix 3.6 project with references. This is in his build. Wix 2010 targets. That is the newer ones. Can't scroll in here. Min version is 3.6. I don't know what you mean, Jacob. Or John, sorry. Yeah, in the project file. Yeah, I don't that doesn't mean anything in the end. Assign target path. That's not ours though. That's MS builds, isn't it? Right? I don't remember, but I mean, we're not using a lot of the common tasks, so I would oh, assume maybe we're that you, using it funny. Or we're not using it at all, and then that's just MS Build. I'm not sure. Well, why doesn't this happen for more people, huh? Um. I think here the suggestion might be to create a new project for Visual Studio 2017 and look at that project, um, how it's different, like the new project template, and have them update to that first because it's possible bringing forward a very old project just doesn't get enough of the new stuff to work correctly with MS Build 15 because the fixes are too are varied. I think that's probably where we should start. Um, so let's leave this open um, this week, and we'll come back. Well, I'll add that comment to this, and then um, let's uh, see if they can try that, and we'll review it in two weeks, because this is a little weird. I'm hoping that updating the, basically modernizing the project file will help. I'm just kind of hoping. .NET CLI tools. Um, so you can't build Wix through .NET CLI um, because it does something different when you do MS when it calls MS Build versus when you call MS Build. Um, um, let's go ahead and give this to me because I'm actually playing with this a little bit in four. So let's go ahead and toss this in four X. You can give this one to me. And I'm going to play with it a little bit because I'm actually doing this. And I'm curious what we would have to do to support .NET CLI. And if we can't, be I'm curious also to know why or you know what's weird about it. So I'll take it and do the investigation on that because that's interesting to me. And then someone wants to add support for XSLT2 and transforms. 
I assume this is for um, uh, harvesting. So yeah, could do that. Toss it in 4x, and someone could do it if they wanted to. And I think we're done. And I think we've lost Bob. He's gone muted, but I think we're going to do that. Um, no, I'm back. Oh, you're back. All right. Switch to auxiliary internet. Ah, there we go. All right. Um, today we're going to do a P P uh, PR review, but we're running a little late, especially since we started a little late. So I th And we had a number of bugs because it's been a little while since we had Wix meetings. So I think we're going to call it there. Is there anything else people want to talk about this week? We had some good conversations about, hey, 3.14, now is ready to start taking uh, features to help us migrate from 4 to 2, 4, sorry, from 3x to 4.0. Um, we also chose that we would take bugs related to the VS 2017 stuff that came very late, for example, the work that Heath did to add detection support, um, but we're not going to take other features, um, things like that. So we'll do a PR review next week. Uh, or in two weeks, sorry. Um, Bob also talked about uh, ways that we can improve our tagging and things like that. I think we got some good ideas there, especially reducing the duplicates and standardizing on the up for grabs, and I really like the whip required one. That'll be very nice. Um, and then we got through some triage. So, anything else? Things people want to talk about? Or are we good? Going, going, gone? All right, John did what I always need. Yes, good. Got my thumbs up. All right, cool. So on that note, uh, you guys take it easy. Uh, we'll see you in two weeks, and we'll do this again with uh, probably some PR review. And we're s and 314 is ready to rock and move on with your 4.0 features. Uh, two weeks. Later. Bye. Bye.